everyone, it's Lisa here with you on the Crafty Meraki YouTube channel. Today I thought I would move away from Christmas cards and I'm going to create a card using those two super sweet cats from Positively Yours and also the Craft Around A2 background die and I'm going to make an acetate card and I'm going to show you a way to add some texture really easily to those animals. So we're going to start off by taking all of the images that we're going to use on the card today. So that's two cats, a ball and a butterfly. And I've just popped them into the Misty and I'm going to stamp them with Memento Tuxedo Black Ink twice to make sure that I get good coverage. And I'm using Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock. So we're going to start off with the colouring and I'm going to put the numbers of the markers up there on screen for you, but this is my darkest. W7 and I'm just going to put that down. I'm mapping out the areas where I think my darkest colour is going to be. Just focusing on the body at the moment. And then I'm going in with W5, going completely over the W7 and blending that out. So what I wanted to try and show you here is that you don't have to have every single marker. I'm now going in with W3, so I've missed out four and I've missed out six. It really doesn't matter, you can get away without having all the markers, uh, particularly if you're on a tight budget, they still blend really well. You just have to make sure that you overlap the previous colour and it might take a little bit more blending just to make sure that you get that smooth transition. Well, I finished off with W1 there and I'm now going to go ahead and do the same four markers on the cat's face. So going in with W7 again first to map out the darkest area and then I will follow up with W5, W3 and W1. Now I should say here that if you want to skip markers that works out really well when you're using the C colours, the W, the N's and the T's. When you go into the different colour families you may, not, you may find that that doesn't actually work as well. It really does depend on um, which group of markers you're using but it definitely works really Really well on the W's and C's which are the ones that I use the most. In fact I don't actually own any T markers and I think I only have one in the N group. I may increase those over time but I may not. I just work with what I have and that is the W's and the C's and I don't own all of those markers either so you can still get a really good blend. And here I just use a W0 on the white areas just to take out some of that starkness. So moving on to the second cat now and this one I'm going to use the C group of markers and you'll see there I'm doing the same thing I'm using 7, 5, 3 and 1. So I'm skipping out a marker and I'm starting off with my darkest and map mapping out those dark areas. Going in now with C5, just focusing on the body at the moment, in with C3 and then I'll finish off with C1. So I hope that that shows you that you can have a really good blend still even if you don't use all of those markers. So we're going to move on now to the cat's face and tail and I'm just going to run through in the same order uh, darkest down to lightest, not forgetting the ears of course. And this is a really sweet set. There's some dogs in the set as well. If you're a dog lover, you're definitely covered and all of the images are small so they don't take long to colour. So just going in now with a C0 and just uh, making sure those white areas are not quite so stark. And then I'm going to use an R20 to colour the nose and the insides of the ears. You could use two different markers here but the areas are so small I thought I would just stick with one. 
So for the collar and bow, I'm using those three markers up there on the top right. Again, this is a tiny um, part of the image. You could get away with two markers here if you didn't have three that worked well together. So I've gone with a kind of aqua teal colour on there. And we're going to finish with some purples on the butterfly and also the ball. So I'm going through my usual process of dark to light and just blending that out each time. And with the purples, once I've finished with my lightest colour, I do go back in with the darkest once again, and I re-add it in those areas where I first had it, just to give them a little bit more definition. And then I finish the colouring off by using a W0 on the white stripe of the ball. Now here's where we're going to add our texture to the animals and I've got a colourless blender refill here. So this is a Copic refill and a piece of white towel. So I'm just going to find a little area on that towel that doesn't have any ink on it and just put some of that colourless blender on it. And I'm just going to dab it a couple of times on each of the cats. You don't want to overdo it or you might cause your colouring to run a bit. But if you just dab it a couple of times, that colourless blender will lift some of the ink. And you can see here in the close-up that you get a really, really nice effect, slightly mottled. And it's a great way of adding more interest to any animals that you colour. And now that I've finished the colouring, I'm just going to take the coordinating dies and cut out all four of those images and set them to one side. I'm using one of the sentiments from the Positively Yours set and I've got a panel of white cardstock in the Misty. This is three and a half inches by two and a quarter. And I'm just going to stamp the sentiment down towards the bottom. So just placing my animals onto the panel there so I can see where I want that sentiment to go. And I'm going to stamp it using Versafine Claire Nocturne, which is a really crisp black ink. So just picking that up with the door of my Misty, inking it up and then stamping that down. And I'm now going to go ahead and start adhering those images. So I'm going to use glue for all of them, no foam tape at this stage. So just popping some Nouveau Deluxe adhesive onto the back of the first cat and I'm just going to position him down slightly off centre. And the other little cat I shall just position down to the right of him but I'm going to have them overlapping a little bit. I just love the expression on that little cat's face, isn't it just so sweet? So just going to add in the butterfly now, sort of top left of the panel and then I finish off with the ball on the bottom right. So all I've done is create a little miniature scene here and we're going to work on the rest of the card now. So got a panel of white cardstock here. This is A2 size, 80 pound white cardstock and I'm just going to add some stick it adhesive onto the back of it. I'm going to cut this panel using the craft around background die and as I'm going to be adding it onto an acetate uh, card. I thought it would be really handy to have some sticker adhesive on the back and that would just make it a lot easier to adhere it. So just attaching the die there with some low tack tape and I'm going to run that through my Gemini die cutting machine. It did cut beautifully. I did run it through the die cutting machine twice just to make sure. And I'm just going to use a pokey tool now just to get rid of all those little areas that didn't pop out on their own. 
So I've got a pre-made acetate card base here. You want to make sure that you create a card base with really strong acetate so that it does stand up well. I'm just going to tape it down to my work surface so that it doesn't move whilst I'm putting the die cut on top. So just removing the backing there and then I'm going to just place that down. And obviously because I've used stick it adhesive you also won't see that adhesive um, on the inside of the card when you open it up. And you can see how pretty that die cut looks on the acetate. I really should use acetate card bases more often. So I have matted up my little image panel onto some aqua card sock. I've put some foam tape on the back and I'm also now just going to add some adhesive and I'm going to press that down over my card base. So sorry I've gone slightly off camera here. I just wanted to make sure that I did get it lined up properly and then I'm just pressing that down. That pretty much brings us to the end of the card. Just one final step. I did adhere another white panel onto the inside of the card. This is going to give me a place to write my message to the recipient and it's also going to cover up the foam tape that I used when I added the panel onto the card base. So I hope that you've enjoyed watching today's card. I hope it gave you a little bit of a break from Christmas cards. I will be back, of course, with another card for you soon. But in the meantime, I hope that you have a wonderful day. Bye for now.